Hello, my name is Georgianne Ford with the Apple Center for Divorce Mediation. And, and I think there's one thing about Christine that we all love when she does these vlogs, and that's you usually have an example for us. And I think that always sticks in our minds so much. So my students love when I give examples. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I'm a conceptual person. So for me to learn, I have to learn by, you know, kind of doing, um, and you learn through experience. Um, so this was something that popped up for me not too long ago. And, you know, you draft settlement agreements for clients, right? That's how they divide up their assets and their liabilities. And as a mediator, you don't represent either side, but you guide both of them toward an agreement. That's all well and good. Um, but what I've seen is a lot of couples just kind of rush to get to that agreement. And in doing so, I think they forget about some of the smaller, more important details, things they don't think about. And so this, I, the blog that I wrote kind of talks about, you know, some pitfalls. Um, and I, I kind of highlighted just one of them, right. which is, you know, what happens when you forget something um, and, you know, you forget to put it in the agreement, you want to go and enforce it. And the example I use is regarding personal property. So usually most couples will have personal property and personal property is anything that you can pick up and carry with you. Okay. So real property is like your home, but personal property could be your car, your phone, your clothing, furniture, you know, anything that's not nailed down. And if you've had like a lengthy marriage, like a 20 or 30 year marriage, I mean, you could accumulate a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is there's some clients that'll say, okay, you know, I'll ask, do you want to schedule, do you want a property schedule attached to your agreement? And that's just a listing of all your personal property. Most people are like, I don't have time to do that. Um, no, we'll be fine. We'll do it ourselves. Okay. So it's not yeah. something you require as part of the settlement. It's, it's optional. No, it's optional. Um, there are others that will literally create a 20 page spreadsheet <laughs> and we'll have a sheet for each room, which, you know, um, me being like a detail person, I kind of like that, but, um, because what it does is it, it puts in writing everything you have in each room and it forces you to go through and do with that inventory. Um, because you'll see, if you go and do that, you'll go through each room, you'll see, well, you know, gosh, I forgot that I had, you know, this item, right? right. And I want it. Easy for um, that to happen. There's so much in our houses if we've been married a long time. Right. So yeah. let's say you do the detailed list and you attach it as a schedule to your property settlement agreement. The example I give is a couple that they were going through a divorce in 2020 and you know, everything was fun and amicable, you know, they were the best of friends and, um, you know, no, we don't need to attach a personal, you know, we're not going to do that with the schedule. Um, you know, we know what each other has and we're fine with that. So what we did, um, we ended up, I think we attached something, but maybe not to the, the level of detail that I wanted. Um, and then basically what I said in the agreement was that, okay, as of this date, and we picked December 31st of 2020, anything that's in the house after that date will belong to wife. And anything that's in husband's possession will belong to husband. Husband moved out of the marital home. So, you know, 2020 passes, we're in 2021 and husband starts dating and wife doesn't like it, but they're divorced. Everyone moved on and um, husband then realizes, hey, I had some things like tools or something in the house that I really wanted. And wife was like, yeah, um, we're done. Signed, sealed and delivered. You can't have it. But if you go back to the agreement, it was actually listed in that little schedule that was attached. So legally, he could take that agreement and go enforce it to a court. Um, the problem is, and that's kind of what this talk is about, is 
you know, no one really talks about the enforcement part of a settlement agreement. Right. You know, and how I'm likely are that. you to get what you want? So while the agreement was drafted properly, um, you know, the item that husband wanted, I think it was like Christmas ornaments. So to most people, it's not a high value item unless it's like, you know, something rare. Um, for husband to execute that agreement to not execute, but to um, enforce it, he would have to file a complaint with the court, pay a filing fee. He'd have to then pay for certified mail to serve it on his wife or ex-wife. He would then have to take probably a day off of work to go to court. He might have to lawyer up. All of this to get what? Christmas ornaments? A judge very well could say, you're out of your mind. What are you fighting over this for? You know, and not award anybody anything. Um, or he could spend hundreds of dollars for a judge to say, okay, wife, give husband the Christmas ornaments. And it could go either way, correct? When you have a, you've got a... Yeah, I mean, depending on the court, the jurisdiction, you know, uh, judges are humans, you know, and while they're supposed to follow the letter of the law, um, they're still human. So what, yeah. could, what could he have done to prevent this? Is there something? So what I would suggest is, you know, just because you have it in an agreement doesn't mean it's like it's enforceable, but that doesn't mean you're always going to get what you want. Um, there's a lot of risk that comes with that. So what I would suggest is if you're going through this process, um, you know, you don't want to go through the house and take everything, right? Um, but you want to take what's important to you before you sign the agreement, before you move out. Oh. And that might mean, you know, like if you're moving into a two bedroom apartment and you don't have space for some furniture or things that you want, um, purchase a storage unit and put the items in there, mm -hmm. but get them out of the marital home. Okay before you go through this process, because it is a lot harder after you sign a settlement agreement and after you, and, and to try and enforce it, than it is to already have, have the, the things that you want. And some things that people don't think about are things like Christmas decorations, or like if you um, have any keepsakes from children, you know, like scrapbooks, mm -hmm. photo albums, um, I had one client who was very considerate. Um, they had photo albums of their kids and they made a copy of like the, the videos so that each parent could have a copy. So I'm not saying that you want to take those items, you know, to keep them from the other spouse, right? Um, things that are relate to children or whatever that are joint, you kind of want to make a copy or make an arrangement, but kind of want to take care of that before you start drafting the agreement. And you know what, it, what's so nice that you're talking about this is this, these are not things we really, I mean, as much as they're really important to us, we're not thinking that when our emotions are all over the place. And you bring up a good point. Um, and that's why this is so overlooked because when you're going through a separation and divorce, you're thinking about where am I going to live? You know, mm -hmm. how am I going to pay for all of that? Mm -hmm. Um, you're not really thinking about cleaning out your house. Um, but have I seen couples divorce and then someone say, yeah, you know, wife said she'd keep that for me for a year. Um, and then wife changes her mind after the divorce is done. Yeah, I've seen it happen a lot. Um, and then people have to fight over it. Um, now with mediation, we don't have that problem as much because we have open dialogue between, you know, the two parties and the mediators. But um, this is back, going back from my litigation days. But um, I think with mediation, you know, if there is a dispute, um, they can always come back to us. I was going to ask you, rather than going to court, is it possible to come back to the Alpha Center? Yeah. And it's something we encourage because it's like, look, you know, you've come this far, you have an agreement, you worked hard for it. Like our clients don't just come in and sit down and have an agreement. They work. Um, but you can... What we do is we tell them if there's a dispute, call us first. Let us be your first chance at resolving an issue. 
And I would say it's in the 90 percentile that we resolve issues. That's, that's wonderful. We're saving them from going to court. Mm -hmm. Really? So when you say, so what I'm hearing from you, I think is, think about these things. Think about, you know, not, not just signing, but getting that stuff from writing. I love the room to room idea. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, good, just, not so pleasant, but it's time consuming, yeah, um, yeah. you know, but it's I think it's very helpful, um, especially if you have like a long term marriage, because you'll realize that you have a lot of duplicates. So then that's easier to share with the other partner. Um, you know, the goal isn't to, uh, you know, wipe the house out so that the other person has nothing. That's not the goal. Right. The goal is here's what we have as a couple. We're dividing everything up. Mm -hmm. Let's make it fair you know, and the person that usually stays in the house keeps like the appliances and all this other stuff. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other things in the house. Right. And what I think, um, what I heard from you as a real tip was, it's not necessary, but it's not a bad idea to get what you actually agreed on before you sign the agreement. It's a lot easier than having to try and fight for it after the agreement's signed and then someone changes their mind. Right see that happening easily things come up i mean ugly things come up so unfortunately <laughs> yeah. um well it definitely the, the fact that mediation number one you're working with them so and it's all about be, trying to be fair is what i heard mm -hmm. and the other thing is that i you know we can come back like if it's ugly i can say can we at least try to get a phone call together with you right yeah and i've done that and i'll mm -hmm. tell you um that the phone call could last 10, 15 minutes and we resolve the issue. Wow. And then the, the clients feel so much more um, at peace. Like, okay, you know what? I just dodged a big bullet. You know, they thought they had to go to litigation. They're like, yeah, we got this. We can do this. That's great. Good topic. Yeah. Thank you. If you are interested in speaking to Christine or anyone at the Alpha Center for Divorce Mediation because you have questions about things like this or... Um, you feel mediation is a potential idea for you, please give us a call at 1-800-310-9085.